good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. How are you? I'm going to say, of course, you're up early because you've got little ones. Nice to see you. A bit of a wet morning. I'm afraid we don't offer soft play here at Sofa House Church. We would if we could. Hopefully we get a few others to join us this morning. A bit earlier than usual because Jonathan's got to go somewhere. both good thanks Matt busy I'm sure you are in these strange times in which we find ourselves I'm thinking Bobby Bobby's your oldest one started school Okay, you good to go? We have Matt Parrott with us today. Hey there, my boy. Maybe the only one, bit of an early start. Are the glasses clean? Am I clean? Many questions. Welcome to this morning's sofa church. From our sofa to your sofa, from the brain sofa to the parrot sofa. And anyone else who's out there today or later on. Bit of a short and sweet one day. Yesterday was a manic day. Today's a manic day. We're going to probably have three quarters of an hour here. That I've got a, a quarter of an hour's worth of complete uh, dedication to get ready to go this direction over to Norris, over in Wokingham for a little bit later on. Okay, so there we are. We pressed the button. The king is coming. Last week we had the king is coming because last week we were meeting down at the village hall. We were hoping that on the 16th of October we were going to be able to meet again just down at the village hall. But it's already booked up. So we may well be having something just in our house on the 16th of October. I think that's probably what we're going to do. So there will be something on the 16th of October and it may well just be a gathering in our house. So if you're free, come along. Let's press the button. King is coming. Oh, look, today we have uh, <laughs> Isaac and Rhoda. Always a surprise to Heather because I don't say who it's going to be. No one knows except Not for me. Not sure about his grin. Um, so he's that. doing a cheesy grin there. Yeah, and a very nice grin from, a uh, smile from Rhoda, who are back from Barcelona to our fabulous weather. Boy, is it pouring yeah, down. I'm really looking to forward to the drive to Wokingham. I really can't think of anything I prefer to do more Stop it. than drive on Stop the motorway it. all the way over there. Um, but they are lovely people. So when I arrive, the journey sometimes could be not so pleasant, but the arrival can yeah. be beautiful. So we're looking Amen forward to, to arriving. We press the button and we see our verse for the day from Nehemiah 13. It's what I've been reading. I'm kind of stuck in Nehemiah and chapter 13, the last chapter. Our God turned the curse into a blessing. And it sounds really, really good. And we've got here really dry ground. We looked at this picture. It's probably hiding on here somewhere from many months, maybe a couple of years ago. A dry piece of ground, but there's a little bit of moisture. We're able to get down into the crack. It did rain at some point. The moisture gets down, hits the ground. There happens to be a seed there or a seed gets washed in in a little flood or whatever. And uh, or by bird. You, you know how this works. Um, well, the kind of the principle of it, don't we? But how it actually happens that uh, water and earth mixed together 
and with a bit of sunlight on the top, bit of oxygen, and they get on top of, uh, uh, was it oxygen or is it carbon dioxide? I'm never quite sure which one it is, that the plants breathe in. It depends in. whether Can't... it's day or night. The That's trees. With plants. Plants. They well, must uh, plants they... in the pond are different, I think. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, there, there's, there's some things going on. Anyway, oh. the point is dry ground, flower. Flower, dry ground, looks parched, looks like curse and a blessing, beautiful flower yeah. comes up from there. It's what we all need in our lives, that's for sure. Just gonna so, say good morning to Brenda. And I can't believe Chloe started this year, Matt. That's amazing. That is ridiculous. I can remember when you were this big, Matt. <laughs> Two at school. Uh, stop that's it. That's wrong. That stop should be it. illegal. That is a blessing. That is that amazing. Is. That is incredible. Yeah. Well, hey, we can beat that. Our grandchildren are basically at college now. No, not, that's a lie. <laughs> it's not quite true. But uh, it's a, where do the years go? Seems like yesterday. Um, I can remember one of the first times that I went to Wokingham and I came back and then we had a youth club on Wednesday night and we had a barbecue out the back of the new building as it was being built, I think. Um, and Timbo was doing the barbecue and um, we talked about, or I think I did a talk about God providing remarkably um, and we'd received a gift um, which covered a lot of bills. So thank you. Oh, you well, zoom in. That. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, we're going to pray. I wanted to emphasize today friends and loneliness. I've been mean, struck this week by uh, people that are lonely and we all feel like that from time to time and how we need friends. About bills, uh, we've all got bills, they keep coming in, they don't stop. Um, taxes and death, the two sure things. But you can avoid paying the bills for uh, for quite a while. You probably run away and actually not pay any bills. So, but you can't run away from death. So there's one, th but you know what the principle yeah. is. And then we've got depression, I've underlined depression there. Also, Ukraine, Russia and Israel, and these countries down here, these all feature in the world that we're in today. I think it would be good. I'm going to say hi to Wendy. And I think it'd be good to pray for the government. I think it's the Conservative Party, um, whatever it's called, conference this week. And I think, I think it'd be good to pray. Okay, let's just do that right now. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rain that comes and uh, this uh, land and my life. Our lives need rain. We need uh, water. We need sustenance. We need uh, just the right mixture coming into our emotions and into our uh, character and into our lives um, to enable us to uh, remain standing and not fall, to not be so parched and dry that we can't kind of sprout any life. Lord, we thank you for uh, your provision into our lives so far in a thousand different ways. Lord, it's lovely hearing of Matt's children growing up like that. It's wonderful. Lord, and for school, we thank you for our schools. We pray for your keeping for teachers and keeping for children, keeping for parents, keeping for brothers and sisters, for those that are on their own, uh, uh, um, only children, um, or children that feel like they haven't got any friends tomorrow or the day after. Uh, for those that um, uh, find it easy to be friendly, for those that find it hard to be friendly and to make friends, we just ask that this coming week will be a good week for those that are lonely or have a chance of being lonely, that they would find a friend um, and that we would make friends if we find it easier of those that are on their own, that mm. you would uh, bring those on the outside nearer to one another, that no one will be left on the outskirts. Lord, we do pray um, for our government, and uh, um, I have no faith in a lot of this. Um, uh, they, Many of them, all of them, no doubt, try their best, but we never hear really any of them, hardly, maybe fractions of sentences of expressing their trust in you and their dependence on you. And But they're trying their best, and they're trying to do what they believe is right. Um, but they're largely doing it in their own strength. Um, and they'll have a committee meeting, they'll have conferences and they'll jeer one another up and they'll hope for the best and they'll try to do things. But bottom line is, apart from you, Lord, and um, you don't force yourself on anyone and you allow us to uh, call out to you. I pray that 
um, that some of them would. We pray for Liz Truss um, that she would call out to you. I think it's very unlikely, um, but we pray that she would come to her senses along with all of the rest of them and, and me, that we'd come to our senses and call out to you more than we try and make our own way and pat ourselves on the back and think, oh, things have worked out well. Well, we read the Bible, we see that things are, are not working out well because people have turned their back on you. They've neglected you. We pray you'd help me and help us all um, as we raise children and as we have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And Lord, I was at a funeral yesterday. We pray for all the folk that are there, those that are particularly mournful and sad, um, are those that are able, um, maybe because there's some distance, to just give thanks for a lovely life lived um for all the friends and extended members of the family that are often at a funeral we just pray for your blessing and pray for your blessing on the memory of my uncle bill and the lovely life that he clearly lived we pray that you'd be with um all of his offspring all of those um uh, physical offspring all those spiritual offspring all those that trace down the line we pray for a whole lot um and lord we we pray for uh, my auntie marcia um left without a husband we just pray that you'd encourage her and help her help us all we pray and we bring before you those who are depressed those that are, are liable to that those that we we're praying for all these particular countries here and we wonder what's going to happen and we can read the bible and we can see what's going to happen concerning these and israel being right at the center of it all lord we pray concerning bills and those that are worried about uh, bills coming up in the days ahead. Um, Lord, would you give each and every one of us the peace that we need just to be calm and to trust in you and to be sensible and logical about decisions that need to be made. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We press the button. Now we ought to have the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to set this to half an hour. Uh, that should just about give me time, maybe a fraction less. That's what we've got less. We're going to be whizzing through today. You think I can talk fast? You've not heard anything of it before. We're going to sing some songs now. Yay. We go over here. Hi, everybody. Okay. I'm giving you a song, but yeah, Mr. Brain. Okay, we're going to do then. Um... We're going to do some harvest ones, actually, because I thought we haven't done that yet. So let's do it. So let's turn to 732. And we plough the fields. This ought to wake Isaac and Rhoda up upstairs, although they're with us virtually on their sofa. Here we go. Let's do a couple of verses. Yep. One and two look good then. He only is the maker.
number seven. All creatures of our oh, no, it's straight away of our God and King. Number seven. <clears throat> one which is one two eight two hear the call of the kingdom because i was thinking about harvest you know physical eating harvest and then i thought about the harvest of souls yep. They've not put, they, that's the second verse. They've not put the third. It should be, well, on my music, maybe it is, because it shouldn't be put their trust in us. Don't, be don't, their trust in, don't, go put, don't, don't, don't do that. Trust do in, not do that. Don't trust that's in a us. bad thing. Trust in us is a golden rule not to do. Wow, look at that. Oh, there's a, there's a tickety boo. Maybe they meant it to meant, mean something else. But uh, anyway, there you go. Press the button. 
I'm going to say good morning, too. Catherine. Nice of you to join us. Well, and I'm done. wondering, so, Mr. Coleman, are you out there as the mystery person? Is Mr. that what's Mr. going on? There are often mystery people. Like, you know, I've been aware through the last couple of weeks, there are a number of people who've watched this somehow extra secretly and they're going, yeah, I've been watching. I'm going, wow, well done, fantastic. So thank you, whoever you are out there who are watching now or at some point in the future. That's really great. Um, we're on day 923. I can't wait till we get to day 1,000. Um, 132 weeks, two and a half. And a bit years in, and we've got our scripture here amongst these other you know ones. What? Day here. a thousand is seventy-seven days away. That's interesting number. Yeah, not long until we get there. Fantastic, we make it there. Uh, Lord, make me ready to meet you. We've got our scripture in the middle there. We press the button. We've got Psalm sixteen. Here we are today. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the one I'm meant to have up. Um, just in case it's not. Um, we did this last. I don't think we did this one last week. Um, no, this is the new one. It's because I'm preaching elsewhere later on that I'm confusing myself because I'm thinking of something else. Preserve me, O oh God, for in you I put my trust. O oh my soul, you have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. My goodness is nothing apart from you. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, nor take up their names on my lips. So don't do this. O oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. These little letters here that are through there are just to emphasize and say a little bit more about it. For six the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. Seek God for advice. And his advice is to be taken to heart. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Now, don't trust your heart. Let God put counsel words into your heart. Don't follow your heart. It will take you the wrong way. But a heart that is dedicated to the Lord will find instruction in his counsel, even at the nighttime when we think an awful lot. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. And my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Now, my Uncle Bill, um, I saw his coffin going into the ground yesterday, and it was just his body. He was His flesh was resting in hope. He isn't thoroughly detached from the flesh. He's waiting for the resurrection of the dead. And it says in Thessalonians that the dead in Christ, those who sleep in the Lord Jesus, will rise first. But he has gone to be with his Lord. Verse 10, Heather. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, the nor grave. will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Who is this talking of here? This is talking of the Lord Jesus Christ. This incredible psalm kind of particularly underlining this. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Okay. Amen. I'm going to say good morning to Angela. Now I know your name. Yay. Hey there. Oh, is that Angela? Angela. Nice to see you, Angela. Well, I can't see you. I can, I can see the phone, Heather, at the moment, but uh, God bless you. Here is a scripture to think about, and this fits in with Nehemiah, and um, particularly verse 13, and putting the chapter 13, and putting the house in order, cleaning. Um, we've been doing a lot of cleaning the last couple of years, a lot of cleaning, getting rid of lots of things internally and externally, uh, lightening the load. Um, and Jabez, a famous character that just stands out from the scriptures, prayed this prayer. Let's do a, a lineage. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me and that you would keep okay. me from evil that i may not cause pain yeah let's just read that through to, uh, I, just you go through it all okay. one day oh that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me that you would keep me from evil that i may not cause pain fantastic and we're reading it uh, going through nehemiah and we're thinking about what nehemiah was doing and his reforms his sorting out of things and particularly in chapter 13 and jabez's prayer is an echo in some ways of what Nehemiah was up to. Here we go. We press the button. Big question section. Oh, wow. Here okay. we I'm go. Like through the lightning on this one then. 
Why can sorry be the hardest word to say? Do you know what I think? Because it takes humility to admit you made a mistake or you did something wrong. And we don't like to be humbled. Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to keep it yeah, moving. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It, you know, it can be the hardest thing to say. And I, I do say sorry, hopefully. Um, Heather says sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, enough, not Mr. Brent. often enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be humble about it. Uh, <laughs> um, but I'm sure we've all come across folk who find it uh, young, children, and old who you think, why well, is now you mention it? Sorry is a word I don't think I've heard for a long time. I, I've certainly known a few folk who I've never heard that word from yeah. them, and we all. We all have reason to be known as people who are sorrowful. Uh, we've all got reasons to be sorry, to apologise. And if you look at yourself and if you think, well, actually, I don't think I ever say sorry, but I've got nothing to say sorry about. you got a problem. You know, we, we've all got plentiful supply of reasons. The Lord knows why we become Christians because we know that we are we're guilty and we've got reason to say sorry we say sorry to the lord for our sins if you've never said sorry to the lord for your sins heaven will not be your home you have to say sorry to the lord for your sins lord i'm sorrowful for my sinfulness and my sins when you forgive me for it all the past the present the future don't put any caveats on that don't say well you know for these things but obviously this thing was right just Lord, deal with the whole lot. You, you know, he wants to deal with the whole lot, but he will He will hold back his forgiveness. If you are if you feel you need no need for forgiveness in these areas or that area, and you just naked before him we stand, and we've got to give an account for the whole lot. So I say, forgive me for everything that needs to be forgiven for. And he will, he will. But you have to ask for it now and approve it by turning from it. You don't go back yeah. to it. Uh, it says in the Bible, when you go back to it, it's like a dog returning to its... Yeah, and you don't, want, you don't want to go there. You know what I'm talking about. It makes you feel ill. Okay, so what have we got? Let's pray. Lord, we do pray for your blessing on this short, hopefully sweet little message from your word this morning. And then you please help me a little bit later on. We've got this long drive, um, which is fine, but I can't do any um, prep along the way, which I kind of need to do. So I just pray that you help, that it would all just come together well for a little bit later on. And give us peace, Lord. I pray for your word as we look into your word that you'd speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, press the button. Here we go. It's working at the moment. Nehemiah's before. There is Nehemiah. If you're wondering who is this Nehemiah and where was he? Well, we have an actual photograph, sort of grainy because it's very old now, but it was the first colour photograph from the time from about uh, two and a half thousand years ago, a bit more than that. Um, and there he is there, there is Nehemiah with his beard, because everyone has a beard. Well, all the men had beards back then, I'm sure. Uh, and actually, they shaved their beards off as a, as a, 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 it was never as a sign of happiness and joy. It's a shame. It was a sign of shame. So It's a Greek um, thing to shave. Everyone should grow a beard today, for sure. Well, uh, yeah, it's a, it's men a Greek exclusively. Uh, yeah, men assume. exclusively. Women do not grow a beard. That's a bad and if thing. you can grow a beard, just... Just you're, you're, it's okay to shave. Okay, here we go. So there he is, and he had a word to say. What, nearly everything he had to say was hard. It wasn't easy. Um, but he, he had people who listened. There were men and women, young and old, who heard him along with Ezra, contemporaries. They heard what was being said, and a lot of that was put into practice. We go here. We got our verse here. Our God turned the curse into a blessing from Nehemiah thirteen two. That lovely picture. Here we go. Here's the word of God. We've got here. What would you do? And national clean up your room day. Okay, that was then. If you missed it, you is also carried over to today. Did so, you do it? Uh, yes. No. I have. We've done a lot of cleaning. So. <clears throat> All I'm going to do is going to read this little section here and it'll stop. And the highlighted parts are what I'm just going to say something about. Just three little things from this. So from the New Living Translation, which is uh, normally we have the New King James Version, which is really good. But we're going to use a New Living Translation because it just um, it speaks in our language a little bit more. 
Um, I would recommend that. Don't use it all the time, but it is really rather good. Okay, Heather, would you like to do the first section? On that same day, as the Book of Moses was being read to the people, the passage was found that said no Ammonite or Moabite should ever be permitted to enter the assembly of God. They had not provided the Israelites with food and water in the wilderness. Instead, they hired Balaam to curse them, though our God turned the curse into a blessing. When this passage of the law was read, all those of foreign descent were immediately excluded from the assembly. Okay, so there's a really awkward bit to start off with there. Um, just imagine, I don't know how many people were excluded, but however many people there were that were of this foreign descent, this is no word to foreigners, okay, obviously. Um, but in this particular situation, there needed to be purity. In our lives, there needs to be purity. And just occasionally, we're willing to make radical uh, reformations and ra there can be radical transformations. And the transformations that God wants for our lives are good. They're wonderful. They're beautiful. But they can be painful. But they're so worthwhile to do. And you think, why didn't I do that before this moment? So regarding the cleaning up the room, we'll get a little bit more practical with that in a moment or two's time they read what had been there all along and we've got this wonderful book the bible which we pick up and it's been here all along mine's fairly worn out heather's is as well you read it a lot you should read it a lot if you've got a bible that's in immaculate condition that's called a problem uh, it needs to be fairly worn out you want to read it and i've had this one a long time so you might say well it's bound to be worn out by now and there is some truth in that I should read it and I should know more because what is written down and what's been written down for an awful long time are words of life, words of truth, mm -hmm. words of um, law and command, decrees and things that have been spoken by God through his verbally straight out himself and through his people, through the prophets for our good. Things that have been passed and not to harm us, but to help us. Not to lead us down the garden path, not to restrict us, but to free us. And the freedoms that you find in the Lord Jesus Christ actually cost quite a lot to get there. And in this case, they, they become truly intermingled and it cost a lot. And it says here, when this passage of the law was read, all those of foreign descent were immediately excluded from the assembly. Now, did they exclude themselves? They heard this and went, OK, we're not welcome here. We sh or We shouldn't be here. We need to be out of here. Well, maybe one or two of them saw that. Maybe some of them, maybe all of them did this. If you're not meant to be where you find yourself to be, don't wait for someone else to kick you out. And certainly let's not wait for the Lord to kick us out. Let's just make our way to the place we're meant to be. These foreigners were meant to be family, but these foreigners had um, annulled themselves from that. They they ruined their situation. They They'd separated themselves way back when. But there's a chance for anyone to come back from the dark part of the sin. Remember that thief on the cross? Who was he? Was he a Jew? Was he a Greek? I don't know. But he, he was dying on the cross. And one of them said no. And one of them said yes. Anyone, the vilest sinner who truly believes a moment from Jesus, a pardon received, can come back. That's the first little thing there. We could say a lot more than that. I'd love to do that. Here you go. The second little thing here. Heather, would you like to read verse 4 down? Before this had happened, Eliashib, the priest, who had been appointed as supervisor of the storerooms of the temple of our God, and who was also a relative of Tobiah, had converted a large storage room and placed it at Tobiah's disposal. The room had been previously used for storing the grain offerings, the frankincense, various articles for the temple and the tithes of grain, new wine and olive oil, which were prescribed for the Levites, the singers and the gatekeepers, as well as the offerings for the priests. I was not in Jerusalem at that time, for I had returned to King Artaxerxes of Babylon in the 32nd year of his reign, though I later asked his permission to return. When I arrived back in Jerusalem, I learned about Eliashib's evil deed in providing Tobiah with a room in the courtyards of the Temple of God. I became very upset and threw all of Tobiah's belongings out of the room. That's exactly what he did. And do I need to say anything about that? Other than the fact that someone who should have been trustworthy Elisha Bib wasn't. He should have been trustworthy, but he wasn't trustworthy. His reputation with a little bit of investigation would have shown that he had a bit of a connection with Tobiah. Now, Tobiah, you remember 
Sambal, Tobiah and Gershom, these two and three really featured all the way through the book of Nehemiah as enemies, as enemies. And Tobiah was an enemy following, you know, kind of Sambalat to start off with, um, followed by Tobiah and Gershom and others following along as people do, following people. Bad, real baddie, baddie, baddie. And then the rest are being foolish following. And Tobiah was, was granted a room, was given a room. What was he thinking? Have you ever thought that about someone? Maybe you think that about me. What, what have you thought that about yourself, about someone? I thought, what were they thinking? It's a little saying. Sometimes Heather says to me, what were you thinking? <laughs> and I go, I don't know. I don't know. It seemed like a good idea. What were you thinking? What were you thinking? And he did this. And he says, uh, before this happened, so it all kind of like ramps up one thing upon another. And sometimes you might feel like that. One thing happens and another thing happens and you start peeling back the layers and you think, what a mess is going on here. Something remarkable, something that you just couldn't see happen. No one, if someone had said to Nehemiah in the earlier chapters, like 10 years, because many years, 12 years have passed by since the beginning of this. There's a long period of time. You read it as a single it's kind of story, but it's a good deal of time has passed by. Tobiah, the enemy is still around. And Tobiah is no longer on the outside. He's even got a room to stick some of his stuff in the temple court. What is going on there? If you'd said to Nehemiah back in the day, you know, one day Tobiah's going to have a room there, Nehemiah would have said, along with any, everyone else, well, that, that obviously is never going to happen. What a weird thing to say. But it happened. Be ready for the weird thing to happen. Be prepared. Don't be paranoid, but let's be prepared. And let's make sure that all of those nooks and crannies of life of rooms. Where is this room? Where, where, where was this? You know, that it's all cleared out and it needs to be cleared out, it needs to be cleared out. OK, uh, what would you do in this situation? And, and Nehemiah, he sees these things and he does stuff. He acts mm. upon it. And sometimes you've got to act upon it. Sometimes it costs a lot to act. You think how many of the early disciples lived to tell the tale? old age uh would that be one really you know you don't live if you give your Christ, life to christ that it will cost okay and then the little blue bit then i demanded that the rooms be purified and i brought back the articles for god's temple the grain offerings and the frankincense okay time for that proper cleaning once the room's been cleared out he threw it all out to buy i don't know where to buy was i mean i guess he'd run away for oh no nehemiah's back you know my time's numbered and you know the evil one knows when his time is numbered and he runs around and he's caused all the trouble he can i wonder how long he'd had that room for oh <gasps> you know i'm sure uh, Alicia didn't ask Nehemiah, Nehemiah, do you think I could get this room sorted out for Tobiah? No. Think about it. There's lots of implications, lots of lessons that can be learned from this. Once it's all cleared out, then purification needs to be take, needs to take place. It needs to be purified. All the right things need to be brought back in. The room isn't to be empty. Our lives are not to be empty. They're to be filled up. If you give what you feel you don't want to lose back to God, he won't leave you empty. He will fill you up with what is beautiful. I mean, you know, what do you know about frankincense, about the articles of gold, the grain offering? I don't know hardly anything. But those are beautiful things. And God will bring beauty into your life where you feel, oh, I've lost it all. I've given it up. If you give it up for Christ, give it up for God, you'll end up with all that you actually need and far more besides internally and externally. In fact, you won't worry about the external anymore in the way that you once did. The internal, what God gives to you, what God does in your lives and your life is of infinitely more uh, value than that external rubbish which you can live without. There you go. And then the last little bit there for us, 10 down, please. I also discovered that the Levites had not been given their prescribed portions of food. So they and the singers who were to conduct the worship services had all returned to work their fields. Immediately, I immediately confronted the, uh, the leaders and demanded, why has the temple of God been neglected? Then I called all the Levites back again and restored them to their proper duties. And once more, all the people of Judah began bringing their tithes of grain, new wine and olive oil to the temple storerooms. OK, I just want to say I also discovered, discover, look around and discover. 
search around, discover. You discovered, you know, it wasn't all done at this point. There were other things to discover, other things to find out. Some of them were maybe far more subtle, like a storeroom. You know, how do you find that out? You know, storeroom, who cares about a storeroom? God cares about a storeroom. Uh, it discovered these other things, that the temple of God, had been, they'd been neglect. Where is there neglect in our lives, in your life? Where, where, is, where is that? Where is it? Ask God, where are there areas of my life, of your life, of our lives, that need sorting out, need resifting, re re reordering? Um, and then all the people began bringing their tithes. They began, you begin to do a new thing. A new thing. I've got a friend who has a, um, a uh, an email address, which is a new thing, a new thing. And, and and sometimes God calls us to a new thing. If God calls you to a new thing, follow through with it. Amen. Amen. Okay. Let's calmly go to the table with some bread and some wine. Okay. Do you want to sit on the chair just next to you, and I'll yeah. set this up. Yeah. We're still on the twenty fifth of. Um, it's not. We know it's the. We know what day it is. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Should I go there? Hey, Angela. Hmm. Yeah, just sort of lying there. Um, a very good friend of mine. Um, we all need uh, a bit of sorting out. Uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, um, made mention that I sometimes talk about um, the Lord's body being broken for us. And the, the scripture, although his, uh, it's not strictly true in the sense that not a bone of the Lord's was broken. Not a, so what he said to me was true. Um, when I speaking about when I use, if I use the word broken, um, he was so marred by the beating he got, our Lord Jesus Christ, that he was unrecognisable. And I think this is in one way where when they saw him again after the resurrection, that he was different. He was different. Um, he was healed, but he was different. And I, I know Heather and I have had some sort of chats about this. I, I just increasingly feel that when we see him, we will, it will be, I, I don't know, but it will be no surprise if we see plenty of healed scars. I, I don't know. Glorified, for sure. Um, whether we do or whether we don't, we will understand and we will see him and we'll be changed from what we are. And what we have here is, a, in a way, is a picture of transformation. Uh, something had to go down and his body was given, is the particular word to be used here, is given. He, he gave his body for us, his body up as a sacrifice to his father. Uh, his body was given up we value our bodies we look after our bodies we we tend our bodies we wash our bodies and he was unrecognizable as a man he was scarred beyond measure on his back with that whip with chunks of lead metal in there just bone in there it would have been awful just horrendous but he chose his moment to die and he he gave up his spirit. We say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for, for being that perfect lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. In Revelation, it says that the a lamb was there as if it had been slain. Lord, we, we fear the lamb. We worship the lamb. We love you, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Please, would you cleanse us from all of our sins? If you've got a bit of bread, uh, let's, let's take that now and say thank you to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this wine, a picture of your the new covenant, the picture of your 
blood that to be poured out for us and was once and for all poured out and without the shedding of this blood there would be no forgiveness of sins not of any blood but of this blood there will be no forgiveness and we thank you that because your blood was poured out for us there is forgiveness and we say thank you so much that we can be cleansed from all of our sins the whole lot really grateful lord we bless you we praise you we ask for your uh, nearness as we take this wine in jesus name amen Thank you lord amen amen let me stay there my love we can just press the button from there i think today um so may god's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way may his presence within god and keep you from sin go in joy go in peace go in love we see there on the 16th of october something will be happening somewhere it was going to be in the village hall but that has been booked up so it will probably be here um, on the 16th we're going to keep it simple have some food probably at this in this time slot you're very welcome indeed god bless you all and then lastly i wish i could remember the words give me the first word may the lord may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you may the lord be gracious, gracious to you and give you peace we're going to learn that this week but one of these days in jesus name amen. amen god bless you all thank you for your prayers for us and for millie especially and for the rest of the family and we look forward to seeing you soon and pray please pray for me uh, for an easy trip that direction and, and the lord's blessing on the dear folk over there in Wokingham. god bless you thanks everyone nice to see you okay. thanks for staying with us this yeah, morning you're very kind and have, have a like good... share subscribe okay. bye